was born in a village. I grew up in a village. And of course, um, ten years, the first 10 years, maybe I should take you to the first uh, 11 years to just tell you how I went to primary school. Of course, as a village boy, uh, my, my mother was a trader and I had to do those trading. I had to trade, I had to go around the villages. I was trading and I was farming. Live with my grandfather who was a farmer. I go to the farm with him, go to uh, harvest cocoa, harvest uh, cola nut, harvest uh, cocoa yam, and so on and so forth. Before I was born, I was told by my, by my parents, my grandfather lost his son. My dad's middle younger brother, who was uh, privileged to have gone to school, and he was to go for further studies abroad, working with uh, the then P and T. Unfortunately, he died and they believed that it was because he was educated, that was why he was killed. So because of that, every other person after him were not going to speak in, both children and grandchildren. In fact, I, all my elder ones had to stop after primary school. They had to go and then they trade. But when it got to my turn, uh, by, by God's uh, intervention, divine intervention, uh, a prophet who was a teacher in our village told my grandfather that this boy will become very great in life. But the only impediment is that if he didn't go to school, that they should do all within their powers to ensure that I went to secondary school. And that was how they called the vision I was in secondary school. Of course, after secondary school, because of the fact that we came from a very, very poor background, and uh, was going to school, secondary school was a struggle in terms of finances. And so after secondary school, my parents uh, said, well, we'll try our best. You go out there and uh, do something for yourself. Go, go with you. Thank you very much. Um, I say this everywhere and anywhere. I have many mentors, but three stood out, and they are still with me, even at my age and my position. They are still mentoring me. Uh, one of them um, was, the, was my boss in Union Bank Registrars, and along the line, uh, I took after her. She became like a mother to me, both spiritual and professional. And she taught me a lot of things like uh, evangelism, Mrs. Lola uh, Ibadejo. She retired from Union Bank as the MD of Union Registrars sometimes in 2005. And she's still alive today. And she actually, in, when it comes to share registration, the nitty gritty, she taught me. And she was even my predecessor as the president and chairman of council of the Institute of Capital Market Registrars. I took her from mine in 2011. And I served in that capacity till early this year when I handed over. Um, another one is um, the King Henry Olayemi. Mr. Henry Olayemi became the president and chairman of council of the Chartered Institute of Subbrokers. I'm also a subbroker by training, uh, by, by certification. So I, when I joined RIMS, more or less, I won't say when I joined RIMS, he actually took me to RIMS from Union Registrars. Took me to RIMS, I worked with him, set up the registrar department between 1991, and I left there, so 1992. I left there in 1995, August, uh, to join United Securities. So he was my mentor and still my mentor up to now. Uh, when you talk, when you measure in the capital market, people thought he was my elder brother, but he has been much more than that uh, for me. He mentored me. When I needed a very good job, he gave me. And along the line, he has been following me. The third person is uh, Pastor uh, Ubed Akumilewo. He's an accountant by profession. He was in the capital market too, but much more, he nurtured me spiritually because he was my pastor in RCCG from 1981. Up to now, I see my pastor, my senior pastor. I see provincial pastor in RCCG, but the same, by God's grace, I'm also a provincial pastor, but he's my senior. So he also nurtured me both spiritually and uh, professionally. As a as an accountant, uh, while I was working under him as a pastor or as a minister, he trained me and ensure that all the way, all my step, all the way. In fact, each time I wanted to change my job, there are three people that must sanction my living wherever I was, even up to when I came here. Mr. Ibadejo, Mr. Lyon, and Pastor Akimule. I must tell them any move I want to make. And thank God so far, it's been so brilliant.
Thank you very much. Yes, I agree 100% that uh, uh, your employee, employees or people are the major asset of the company. Even in this area of uh, this era of digital technology and the rest of them, there's nothing you can do without human being. Yes, we work remotely today, but human being must be behind the camera like you are now, or behind the scene, behind the telephone, behind the Zoom meeting for you to be able to do your, your work so they are the best asset and the major asset for that matter over the years i'm a person that work i believe in uh, uh, management by example i believe in what they call management by working around you understand that when you move around to see what you're providing so when you go to the shop floor and you help them to do what they're doing they see you as part of them but when you stay alone with them and we then you won't get anything done so they know that they can do it you show them example in character, issue of integrity. Of course, every company or every business has its own culture. Our culture includes integrity. It includes uh, uh, service excellence. It includes um, um, operational excellence. And it includes, of course, being good to everyone that comes your way. So they know that, and they know that you are leading a pack of people. You don't take bribe. They won't take bribe. You don't curse, they won't curse anybody. You are always front at meetings, they front at me. So when the culture, uh, any culture of any company should be led by the CEO. And over the years, we've been able to teach people on integrity, on service excellence. And today, at the point in time, actually, about five CEOs of different registrars at the point in time were actually put us of this place. At the point in time, the MD of Union Registrar left here to, to be there. At the point in time, the MD of Echo Bank Registrar uh, was from here. At the point in time, the MD of uh, African Prudential, UB Registrar that became African Prudential, came from here. In fact, he left the registry about two years ago to become the MD of UB Capital, which is also within the same group. Uh, then the number two in uh, Echo Bank was also from here. Today is number one in Echo, Echo Bank, Echo Bank Registrars. Also, uh, the number two then in Zenith Bank Registrar was for me. So a lot of people who train because of the culture of this place, culture of excellence, we were able to train a lot of people, a lot of uh, manpower for the registrar's industry. And that's why today, anywhere you go, any registrar that you, you, you go today, you will see our footprints. Whether it's uh, RIMS Registrar, whether it's NAR Registrar, which is now called Peace Registrar, whether it's Diamond Bank Registrar, whether it's Zenith, which is now called Veritas, we see our footprint there because God has used us to train a lot of manpower for the industry. Thank you very much. I, I, I think I should just uh, a little bit um, go back to first question. Uh, something happened before I was born. I was told by my, by my parents. My grandfather lost his son. My dad's middle younger brother, who was uh, privileged to have gone to school and he was to go for further studies abroad, working with uh, the then P and T. Unfortunately, he died, and they believed that it was because he was educated that was why he was killed. So because of that, every other person after him were not going to speak in both children and grandchildren. In fact, I, all my elder ones had to stop after primary school. They had to go and then they trade. But when it got to my turn. Uh, by, by God's uh, intervention, divine intervention, uh, a prophet who was a teacher in our village told my grandfather that this boy will become very great in life. But the only impediment is that if he didn't go to school, that they should do all within their powers to ensure that he went to secondary school. And that was how they called the vision I was in secondary school. Of course, after secondary school, because of the father who came from a very, very poor background, and uh, he was going to school, secondary school was a struggle in terms of finances. And so after secondary school, my parents uh, said, well, we'll try our best. You go out there and uh, do something for yourself. Go, go with you. And that was how I found myself in Lagos. Uh, my first love, actually, uh, somewhere was journalism. That is the truth. Ask anybody. That's why I still write. I mean, I, I've, I've authored three books. I have many other books in the often Because of time, I've not been able to, to bring them to the, the, to get them to be published. So my first love was actually journalism. First love. And 
uh, I actually got a form to go to the Polytechnic Ballot to do journalism. My friend, my, my classmate, fortunately today is the, is the Commissioner for Information in uh, the State, recently um, appointed. He used to be the president of the uh, of Nigeria Union of, Union of Journalism, uh, Wairo Dishile. So we actually plan to go to uh, Polytechnic of Ballot together to do journalism. But because of money, I couldn't. So I had to get a job. And my first job in Lagos was uh, a job at Michelin Nigerian Limited, Michelin Tires, somewhere around here in Jora. And I got that job on precisely the 24th of uh, December 1981, after my school start. So um, seven months down the line, I got another job with the Union Bank. And that was how my career started. By design, that is by God's design, not by my own making. I was posted to the then registrar's department of Union Bank. And I was like, hey, I was asked to come for interview in the bank. It's not a bank. I thought I would be sent to uh, the branch banking or to go and do my banking. But fortunately, then it looks like, unfortunately for me then, I found myself in an head office department called registrar department where they just keep records. And I wasn't very happy. I thought I wanted to go to the bank make some money, and then go back to school. And that was how my journey started. Uh, along the line, I got admission to go to university. After about four or five years, I've saved a lot of, a few, few amount of money, saved money, got admission to read the accounting at the New York uh, University. But somehow, God told me, and I heard him clearly, that I should continue with my banking uh, exams, professional exams. But then I registered to write CIBN and that I should continue with that because of my siblings that if I live and go what will happen to them so I had I stayed and immediately I also registered uh, to write the uh, to do the BSc accounting in Union Life so I was combining the professional exam with the with the uh, banking and the, with the BSc and here we are today and I've been in this industry for about 38 years now. Moving from Union Bank Registrars to RIMS Merchant Bank Registrars to United Securities to now Merchant Bank, Diamond Bank Registrars, now Merchant Bank Registrars before I came here in the year 2000 to be the Registrar and the MD of this place. I think uh, 2020 is actually a defining moment for not just organization, but uh, the human race. Nobody ever thought in 2019, December, that there would be something called COVID. And that became just from little illnesses uh, and there to become a global pandemic. This has actually structured the way business are done. Over the years, in the banking industry, in the capital banking industry, we've been discussing uh, work, uh, the work life, or work, how, how work will be in the next 10 years, next 15 years. We never need to actually come quickly than we thought. We, we, we had envisaged that over the years, uh, the workplace will become more digitalized, digitalized, will become more robotic in nature, robotic in, 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 in uh, empowering, but we never thought it would be fast forwarded to 2020. And the uh, global pandemic has actually taught us a lot of lessons. And for those of us who have been investing over the years in technology, it was not very difficult for us to cut over from 100% uh, labor and human intervention to, to doing our job remotely. So what will shape uh, our business and what is shaping our business, what will shape it in the next 10 years, are uh, issue of technology and digitalization, Issue of regulation. Regulation is becoming more uh, stiffer and stiffer. Uh, you will, you will, I'm sure you have read in the paper recently that uh, 
uh, the government is moving, moving the idea of uh, having the unclaimed dividend trust fund in the new finance bill. That was a fight that we fought over the years because we believe, and I still believe, that it was it's a private sector money to be left with the private sector. Yes, for registrars, it's been taken away from us. We were managing 100% before, but the past three or four years, there was a rule that says after 15 months, unclaimed dividends should go back to the companies that issued them. 90% while 10% remains with the registrar to, 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 to use to service those who come up uh, for their for their dividends. So by and large, technology, um, digitization, regulation will shape our, our economy. Yes, there is a lot in the industry today, not only in the capital market, not only in the banking industry, but in the economy generally, we know that we have a lot of um, high rising job losses. And of course, uh, many people, many girls uh, uh, chasing very few jobs. That also is uh, uh, a problem, or if you like. It's actually a pandemic waiting to realize ugly head. We saw what happened during the NSAS uh, protest, which was hijacked eventually by hoodlums. We saw what happened because people are hungry, people are angry, people are jobless. So they do anything and everything to sustain themselves, including robbery, including looting, including hassle. So the issue of uh, uh, provision of job by not just the government, by even the private sector should be looked at because it will shape the future of not only our industry, but the economy generally. And one thing we can do is that the, the millions of jobless youths can actually be retrained, be skilled, and retrieve, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. A lot of graduates today can actually be trained in skills like this photography. Uh, I have a lot of graduates that I know today have two major, uh, if I, I'm sorry if I call them tailors, two major tailors or two major fashion designers. They're graduates, they are doing very well. And after some maybe years of searching for a job, they started to go and learn this trade. And today they are doing very well. They are keeping living for themselves. And when they sew for you, including suits, you will never know. It's not important. So there's a lot that government and the private enterprises, listed companies, banks, uh, capital market operators can do to assist the government in training and retraining these youths, especially in vocations. Photography, fashion designing, hairdressing and uh, cosmetics or cosmetology and all that. So, so that we will be able to take them up the street and they can become responsible people. So demography, uh, population is expanding despite the fact that income uh, to, to, to nations are shrinking. Nigeria in particular, we are, our, our mainstay has always been oil. We need to refocus. We need to begin to train people on agriculture, not just going to the farm, but the whole value chain and of course, empowering them, not just training people to, to learn a skill or the other, we also need to empower them to be able to, to stand on their own. And I think this current government is they are trying their best uh, with different social investment uh, opportunities that are, they are being created, including policies from Central Bank, from uh, Bank of Industry, from uh, DBN, that's Development Bank of Nigeria. But then the issue is do these initiatives, palliatives, and intervention get to the right people? So we need to refocus. And ensuring that they, they are not just announced, they are real and they get to the right people. Not somebody who's already gainfully employed, still arguing to get part of this because they see it as national cake. We need to have a lot of um, orientation, publicity, and getting people to do the right thing. In the early 90s, most young people were very bullish in terms of moving, uh, jumping from one job to the other, leaving one bank, especially those of us in the bank industry or capital market industry, leaving one employer for another one, probably because of uh, uh, increase in salary, because of position, and because, of course, everybody wants to, to go where uh, you get better, better future, you know. Uh, looking for what they call the proverbial greener pasture. And some of us also try, including myself, actually moved between 1991 
and 19, and you, at 2000, I moved there about six times. Average of two years in some, in some places. For the last one, before I came here. Now I've done 20 years here, most 21 years. The, the, one, the one before this days was actually less than uh, six months. That was now Merchant Bank. Uh, but one thing that has really helped me over the years is anybody can say anything. I believe in God, my faith in God. I don't make any move without praying and without talking to my uh, mentors who are basically Christians. We pray together and they say, okay, go. For my first move from Union Bank after about nine and a half years, uh, I got a job and two jobs actually at the same time. And I, I told my, one of my mentors, Mommy, about the job. What shall I do? She said, let us pray. Give me one week. After a week, she came back to me and said, boy, God said, where you are going, there will be a problem there. Nevertheless, go. Because I will make a way for you. And I just caught that vision. And I went. When I got there, I saw the problem. But God made a way for me. Like he promised. So what I'm, I'm trying to say, a lot of my, my, my colleagues, a lot of my, my mates who had uh, left at the same time, I left some of them. That was the last move they made. Because a year, two years later, they lost the job. And they've never been back to the bank industry. So I've seen the hand of God. Not that had happened to me. Uh, like I said, people are even more qualified. I have ACC, ACA, CIB, much more than myself. Uh, many of them are nowhere where I am today. Many of them have even lost out in the banking industry. Many of them are doing many, many jobs today. But each time there's a shaking in any way I went to, God will always open another way for me. So it's been God and God and God all the way. Let me say one thing. I'm not there yet. Um, I am not there yet. I'm still coming up. I still have a lot of ground to cover. Yes, in this chosen narrow profession, capital market and registrar, I've gone to the Z. In fact, I've been on the top of this profession in the past uh, 20 years. By becoming the MD of first registrars, which uh, was then like number two in the industry, but today by God's grace, we are unarguably number one in the industry. Um, so I've got to the top in the past 10 years as far as my, this narrow profession is concerned. But also, God has also helped me uh, to become the president and chairman of council of CIBN, which means all professional bankers in Nigeria, I am their leader today. So God has been so good. But um, has it been what the why? Yes, in all respect, in terms of achievement, in terms of uh, ability to, to feed myself and help others, in terms of having to mentor others, in terms of having to bring other people uh, to becoming somebody in life, in terms of having to provide a uh, helping hand, a uh, shoulder to, 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 to lie on, and so on and so forth. God has been so good. I can't ask for, uh, for more. But God can still do more and he's still doing more in my life. Uh, so God has been so good. The first one I've mentioned, God, and he's the most important anchor. My family have been so, so supportive. My mentors have been so great people. And of course, I have also my cardinal points in life, which I always preach to everybody. And number one, it is hard work. After God, of course, God is number one. Then the next is hard work. Industry. In the Bible, the Bible says in uh, I think uh, Proverbs 22 verse 29, says thou a man diligent in his business, he will stand before kings and not for me, amen. That's number one. Number two, integrity integrity. When I was in secondary school, we had this uh, principal called Pa M.A.G.J. He was my principal. Every Monday morning, he gives us what we call Monday morning tea, a word of wisdom. And two of those words, or three of them, uh, stood out. And one of them is very key to my life up to now. And the word is, associate yourself with men of integrity or men of honor, if you esteem your own reputation, 
For it is better to be alone than to be in bad company. So that speaks to integrity. Integrity is very key. Don't go with people that will mess you up. So in my life, I have very few friends. I choose my friends by God's grace. I don't go out with people that will mess me up. I don't go with, out with people who have shady characters. And that has helped me. I've stayed longer than any registrar in this industry. I've done 20 years in this same company and it has grown from leaves uh, to bands, and in leaves and in bands. And to the extent that today we are partners, when I say we, all the staffs are partners of this business. It used to be owned by First Bank, but it was sold to new investors and we, the management and staff, happen to be part of the new investors. So it has been God. Integrity is key and up to tomorrow, you can't find my name where they are doing shady things. No, I don't do it. And they know me in the industry. Both my suppliers, my customers, they know I won't do color color business. If you can't do it straight, forget it, I'm not involved. And my first year in this place, somebody came with some sort of thing, including charms for me to do fraud. So I, I refused and God vindicated me. So what am I trying to say? Industry or uh, hard, hard work, integrity, continuous improvement. As I'm speaking, I'm still reading. I don't rest on my words. I'm a stockbroker, I'm a cater secretary, I'm a banker, I'm an accountant, I'm a pastor, and I'm still reading. And you see, when I was growing up, uh, when I first joined the banking industry, when I, was, when I started writing the banking exams, I wrote in my books. Then if you see my early books, if I can get any of them, you will see I wrote there ACIB, ACA, uh, M A B B S C, M S C, PhD, all sorts of degrees on my paper. Then I had only school start and just trying to get other things. But it came into being. So you must have vision also. Vision. You must run with your vision. That's what the Bible tells us. Run with your vision. It may tarry. It may delay. And one of my senior pastors in RCC says, uh, waiting time is not wasting time. So when we were toiling, I mean, for work, I was working, I was reading for my ACIB, I was reading for my BSc at the same time. Along the line, I also got married. So I was doing four or five things at the same time. So I know how to multitask. So as you are growing up in the, in the industry or in your career, you must also know how to multitask. And finally, maybe, there are many things I want to say, but finally, you must not eat with your ten fingers. As a Christian, I believe that after I earn my, my income, first and foremost, I must settle God, pay my tithe. After I pay my tithe, I must also reserve maybe 20, another 20% for investment or savings. Then I can blow the remaining on whatever I want to do with it. But there must be things of value. I don't spend frivolously. I help a lot of people, especially when it comes to education, health. I don't joke with it. So, you must have vision. You must be industrious. And I read John Maxwell, one of his books, says talent is not enough. You may be talented, you may have degrees, you may have sort of, but then, if you rely only on that, it's not enough. You must have a belief system, you must love people, you must work with people because you can't do it alone. You must cooperate with others. I also love this community of cooperation and competition. With people in my industry, I don't compete with them. I co-opt with them. I compete and cooperate with them. And that today, even years ago, when I first got uh, uh, our software in the industry, I told others how I got it and what it is. And many of them joined me. People say, ah, you are showing them your business. I said, no. The more they know what we are doing, the better for the industry. And that's why today, Rexha's industry has moved from what it was before to what it is now. If we were 100% manual, manual labor, that was what we were doing. But over the years, technology came in. And today, many of us don't even come to, I hardly come to the office. My people come to the office, some of them three days in a week. They work at home. During the pandemic, at least the first three months of the pandemic, we were working basically from home. And no, no, no problem. We are doing our things from home. And we are still doing that. So let people know what we are doing, show them. They can steal your technology, but they can steal your brain. So, um, if you
if I want to advise myself 20 years, when I was 20 years old, I want to advise a 20 years uh, old person who's in this career or in life. I think I've mentioned some of those things. Apart from being God focused, you must also focus on whatever you are doing. You must believe in yourself. You must know that talent is not enough. Uh, you must know that you must have passion for what you are doing because passion energizes your, your talent. Okay? Uh, you must also have initiative because initiatives activate your talent. You should, not, you should not wait until you are told what to do before you do it. Especially if you know your audience. Uh, also, uh, if you see anybody who has no fear vision, don't go with that person. You see, any life in the banking industry, in my industry, I made up my mind that I won't go with people who don't want to go anywhere. And you got a lot of them then. They tell you, oh, you are going to school, you want to kill yourself, you are doing ACIB, you are doing uh, BSc at the same time, it's the only you. I don't listen to them. I listen to my heart and to my spirit. What God says to do, I do them. And uh, of course, I'm, I'm, not, I'm social, but I'm not reckless. I was not, and I'm not. I'm still not reckless. Uh, of course, I've been a Christian all my year, all my life since secondary school. So it was, I guess, as a, as, as a young Christian along the line, you fail, you fall, but then what that the, the seed inside of me that has been planted grew over the years, and I became what I am today. And I've mentioned the issue of focus. Focus directs your talent. So even when you are talented and you misuse it or you misdirect uh, it or misappropriate it, 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 it goes back to haunt you. So be focused, be prayerful, be hardworking, be a man of integrity, of an impeccable character. When you can be the only person saying no when you know what you are saying. And at times you may they may all be they may all think they are right, but you may be the only one that is right. Especially when it borders on integrity. Nobody can tell me, can say anywhere, and I can say it anywhere. If I have asked you for bread before for before I for service, come and tell me, I will refund you ten times. If I have cheated you before, come and tell me, even up to now, I can say it anywhere. I'm ready to restitute and and, and, and pay back ten times. I trust me as much possible to do. You see, my mom and my father used to tell us that in Yoruba, don't tell men, tell one she. Remember the child of whom you are. And as they also told me then, a motherless child she will ensure that he doesn't have sore at the back because nobody will be able to, to treat it. So, what am I trying to say? Do your best. Be in the company of people who are going somewhere. In the company of people who are protected. So as a 20-year-old person, don't be reckless. Prayerfully pursue your career. God will bless whatever you do. Looking for something to 
and I saw it. Somebody put it back at the feet. My brother, on the, on the back, at the my friend who later took over from me, or bless everybody, sleep down in Galawala, in Galawala. Go to the material to eat, and come. We saw this at that. In fact, me in Galawala in particular, he sleep down in the beginning. Uh, he took over from me in Galawala when I was sleeping. I was asked to go somebody in the middle. So he was architect to my brain then because he was the one that pushed me. And what they were asking for him, first back then was, you must have a first degree, you must have either ACIP or ACCA or ACA or that. You must have worked in a merchant bank, you must have worked in a commercial bank, you must have an MP or an MS. And he called me. He said, but among all of us, you are the one that have all these five what you should ask for. Some of us have four, some are three. I was prepared. When I was in my MBA, people asked me, are you, are you okay? What is your problem? You have ACIP already? You have BSC already, you have that already. What are you using? I said, I'm not reading for anybody. I'm reading for myself and for the future. And when the future came in 1999, I had the qualification. I came for an interview. Out of 11 of us, I was the youngest. And that was when I was chosen. So I was prepared. And when the public came, I was able to prepare. So young men, I always tell people, be prepared. All I need to do, if it's really just continue to collect certificates. And Pastor Beck, one of my mentors, told us in 1992 to do that about. Not those days when you get the back end of even if you don't have qualification, provided you are working, you are hard work, you will be getting promoted. Maybe every three years, every four years. Although there's a level you can get. But he told us then that it's better to have qualification and not have a job than have a job without qualification. So one day, the man that has no qualification, do you know the job will send them away? The ones that have no job, they have qualified them away. And that was what happened back in the school. They were, they were asked to go. The people that have qualification were brought in. So, if I was not prepared, I wouldn't have been. I was prepared, and like I said, the power is the of God. The of God, uh, preparation, integrity, uh, which other Left soul and connection. Yeah, of course you need that one. That's focus of mentoring. You have a mentor. You see, my all my jobs, apart from first time, was you know I applied for. I applied for because it was advertised. Even my first job in Union Bank as a clerk. Yes, I applied for it. Somebody had to submit a CV to somebody well known. Otherwise, maybe they don't have called for it. But every other job I did was my recommendation. That's the thing. So, like me, just people from nowhere, you know, as a buyer of power. When I was with Williams, it was a very nice community buyer. She wanted to change the job. Somebody is asking for a registrar and I'll mention it again. She wanted to go there. I said yes. When I was with USL, the United States, the Registrar of Asset Matters, I go to there. When I was with Lib there, I just got a call. Somebody that met one way with us in bio, come and say that I have what we have comfort. So and so and so connection is also very important. You must have a network. I had that get to me in the because of the the cost of this job. It's he is a stock of that. He used to send his boys from say come to our office. I help them. And along the line, of course, they won't give me one that will take. They give me a don't take. So along the line say, ah, this boy who has been very good to us, let's give me a house, I come to so, connection is very, very important. How do you know? Of course, the first thing is the program. Money is important to the extent that it is useful to be sent as a messenger. It is a means of exchange. I can't die because of money. I can't kill because of money. I can't steal because of money. I can't lie because of money. So, money is so essential.